Alright, where we start with is last people in a basket. There's several different ways to do it. Just the basket, not to the board? Well, we'll talk about just the basket and the board because okay. they have different little things we have to do with it. Using the basket, this one's off Tower 10, it's identical to the ones on Rescue 30. Then you keep in mind if you're using Rescue 30s, it has a cover on it, they'll need to come off before you use it. Because the cover covers most every single tile you need to use. Both our baskets also have the seat belt built into it. We can incorporate those or we can do a, something with the webbing if we need it to be a little more secure. But basically what we want to accomplish is getting the patient so he won't move front to back in the basket or come out of the basket and we're hauling them up. There's different ways to do it for low angle because we're not worried about him going heads down most of the time. But if we're actually lifting him completely off the ground in our rope system, we have to secure him so he won't come out the foot end, the head end, or out the top. So what we've got, we have two 25 foot pieces of webbing and one 30 foot pieces of webbing. We'll start with that. We'll show you how to build a harness, lash them in, and secure the patient. So to get started, we have to build a harness for the patient. And what we'll do the easiest way is to make Make a loop. Kind of flip the loop outside the basket. So we've got the two tails, one going to each side. Our patient, to Casey, All right. would lay our patient into the basket. His head will be up here. I'll leave that down there. So now. We have the two pieces going underneath them. We'll take and flip the top up, get underneath his arms. We're just going to take and work this down. So now we have a loop that's encompassing the patient. Then take the tails, we'll come up to the shoulders. We'll come over, go underneath, wrap to the inside. Other side, other side. So wrap to your inside. So that's creating a full round turn right here. So as we cinch this down, it tightens up. Next we're gonna take these, run down, and find our vertical tie-off point. We wanna make sure we use the little rails on the coming up and not the main rail here, because we wrap around the main rail, we'll create a rub point where the webbing get chafed and cut. So we'll do, if we're pulling this down tight, we just have to do a little snug. Do a full round turn, so we'll come around the post one old time. And we can tie it off with a couple half hitches. Push the end through there. And pull it tight back against the post. Okay. Now do another one of those little okay. half inches right there. Is that black? Is that black? Yes. We're both 25 footers. Now you just take, tuck your excess, just tuck it down and up, out of the way. So now he has a chest harness on basically. What it allows us if we were to pick up his feet right now, he shouldn't slide down, head out. Not yet. Now you create a waist harness which will keep him from sliding feet out in the basket. So we're going to find the center of our 25 foot webbing.
I'll take one end, flat underneath this please. So we get the center right here. I'm going to work it up nice into the crotch. I'm going to take our webbing, come from the bottom through. You can try to make it so there's a nice enough loop to where he's comfortable. Make sure these loops are high up on his legs and his hips. They don't slip. We'll come up again to the vertical pose. Be very mindful of webbing ends. There you go. Again, one complete wrap around. And snug it up. And then we'll again tie it off with two half inches. In, tuck our ends in. Now this basket, since it does have the seat belts on it, we can use these, the chest ones, to cross over. Come on, your arms are side. Then you come underneath on that one. This one over. Legs, they go straight across. Not too tight. And one of the feet. We're going to be hauling him out a long distance, like back of Haw Ridge. You want to get there? We're patting under his knees and back like you do it on normally. This one also has a footboard on it, which can be tightened right here. If he's got a leg fracture, we want to take this off. We don't want to be pushing his leg, femur fracture, or anything back in. The harness will keep him from moving most of the way. This is more just a comfort thing for him. Now, he's rigged so we can pick up the foot or the head. He shouldn't slide more than an inch or so in either direction. Now, do we need to, I mean, if we're going over the hall ridge and just carrying him out or putting him on the bill or whatever. He needs to be secured like that with the chest harness and the leg harness. If he's going to be, at a minimum, I would do at least the waist harness. If it's going to be somewhere where you're not going to go in heads down, you know, he's always going to be head up, the waist harness will keep him from sliding down. Like if we're coming up in the bank for a low angle situation, we're going to be hooking our haul system up here. We want to keep him from sliding out the ends. 90% of the time or more, what happens? We put them in the basket, we put those four straps on, and we haul them out. And we rely on that little footboard to keep them in. So the 30 foot piece of webbing we have is to do the shoelace up. If we didn't have all these straps, we can lace them in. And what we do, we find the center. Come down here. And girth hitch. So now we have two tails. What we do, come to the outside of his feet. So we keep them nice and tight together. And we come to the rail. Start from the top, wrap around. You want to come in from this side. That way you get a full turn on here to help keep tension on it as you go. So once you get that, we're just going to switch sides. Again, come to the front, wrap around.
Come up. Get the one of the shoulders. We we do want to do now is tie it off. What we don't want to do is run this across because he's gonna get the strap too close to his neck. We don't want to choke our patient or transfer. So what we'll do is we'll start down here and start working the slack out. Once you get the slack out, we'll wrap it all the way around. Yes. Again. So now he's completely lashed in. We can pick him up, flip him upside down if we want to do, make sure he'll stay. We won't do that. I crushed him. Yeah. Any questions on the lashing? It is time consuming. They do make systems that are supposed to speed up at least the shoelacing part that we're looking at. And also something they started doing now is patient harnesses. Where basically you have a waist belt, a class two style harness, the slides are underneath, buckles, you tighten it and it's got two leg straps you put on. The nice thing about that is you're not building a harness on it. You're taking girth hooks, your two pieces of webbing to his main attachment ring run one set up, one set down, and he's in a harness so he's not going to slide up or down. If it was a, a real emergency, you would most likely end up cutting the webbing. Instead of taking Especially the if you put them in the ambulance, they will cut the webbing for you. But we're going to put them on the, the <laughs> backboard. We'd want to go ahead and make our loop with the webbing for our chest harness. Before we log them on, we're probably going to get them onto the backboard. Just to make it easier, we can do it without, but it's a real pain. So. So again, we just make our loop, flip the loop over, pull down. All right, now you got it. Swap out patients, Dave. And just secure him to the backboard as normal with straps. Normal speed shoe. straps, seat collar. Oh, Once our patient's on the back, we want to make sure we secure the patient to the Stokes basket and not the backboard to the Stokes basket. So the patient is always secured so we don't have any failures of the backboard when the patient come out of our Stokes basket. So what we want to go over is, one, how to put the harness on for those guys that have never worn one, and two, how to make it nice and neat for the next person. So who hasn't put a harness on? Okay. Wait a while. Up, Kenny stepped up. So, when we look at the harness, we want to break this into two pieces and we're thinking about putting it on. We've got the bottom part and we have the top part. Don't try to put it all on at once, break it into two pieces. So we're just going to let this hang back here, and we're going to focus on our front harness, the bottom part of the harness. We put this on, we got two leg straps. On this one, we want to step through, so we have one leg on each side of our straps. So, I step through, put one leg through here, and one through there. Now just pull this up. You want to get the harness up at your actual waistline. Not where you wear your pants, but where your waistline really is. So it's sitting on your hip bone. So once you get it there, go ahead and pull your waist straps tight. Which would be these straps, and pull them down. The extra large might be a little big. But we'll get the general. We'll make it work. All right, so you got your waist strap on. Next thing you want to do is find your leg straps. One at a time, they have a quick buckle on them here. The easiest thing to do, go ahead and slide this out and get you some working room. The buckle itself, it pushes through, and then it turns to lock in place. Then go ahead and snug your leg straps up.
As you're putting this on, you don't want to snug everything down as tight as you can right away. You want to get things settled in and adjusted. And then right before you get on a rope, you'll give everything a good tightening. The chest harness on this one is adjustable front and rear. So we have an adjustment point here. And then we'll have one up the front. So when we put this on, you have two straps that'll go over his shoulder. And what we want to try to get is this sitting in the center of his chest in the back, sitting about the same place around back. So really putting this harness on is a two-person operation. One person actually putting it on and one person adjusting and fitting. So go ahead and tighten this down. The center strap up front will hook into the main D-ring on the bottom part of the harness. The biggest trick of this is we want to come through this little slot here and come up through the D-ring. That way the strap doesn't lock down your D-ring. A lot of people, when they put these on, will run it through just like this. The issue is your D-ring is no longer usable. So make sure we come through the back part right here and then up through the D-ring. Then comes up through the adjuster. This one has a, circumfer a circumference band for the chest. You have to make sure both straps come around through the adjusters. It's going to take you right there, buddy. So once the harness is on, we notice all the straps aren't twisted and we're ready to go. We want to go ahead and tighten up all the straps. Usually, get a buddy to help you, especially the chest band you want tightened, snugged up. Once it's snugged, we want to try to tuck any straps that we can so we don't have anything dangling that can hook. hook. This center strap right here, right before you get on rope, the guy in the harness will want to kind of hunch over a little bit and pull this down. It's going to be uncomfortable to stand, but as soon as you get on rope, you need it to be that snug so your harness isn't pulling away from your body. Comfy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Leg straps also, right before you get on rope, it's best to kind of lift your leg up and pull it and cinch your leg strap down. So it'll be nice and tight and you're not going to have the harness pulling away from your body. The tighter you get it now, the more comfortable it'll be once you get on the rope. Again, we want to try to tuck all this the best we can so we don't have anything getting hung in any of our ascenders or descenders. The waist strap on this harness actually has little holders. Along with the leg straps. So we want to make sure all our straps are tied up. On this harness, we have three attachment points that we can use for the rescuer going in the hole. We have the normal waist D ring, which we will use primarily. We have a chest D-ring that's also a rated lifting point. And then if you'll turn around, we have the dorsal attachment that we'd use if we're going into a confined space. Most of the time, the rescuer is going to want to be hooked by his waist. Turn around. We hook here normally so we have the freedom to move. If we were to hook up here, it's going to be very difficult for the rescuer to lean to his side or turn over invert to get to the patient. So we'll hook into the waist, we can invert because we have a full body harness, he's not going to fall out of it and perform the rescue. Any questions on the harness? Alright, go ahead and get Kenny out of it because he looks uncomfortable. Webbing ends. First thing we want to do is we're going to build two anchors, one for a belay 
one for a raise. Okay, so a three to one raise and a blade. You need to try to do the tandem prussics and the 540 on the blade. So let's work on building us an effective anchor. On this bolt right here. Try and meet as many of those earnest standards as you can. Okay, now if this one fails, it's redundant. If one of these fails, it's redundant. If this fails, it's not, but you gotta do what you gotta do, and it's very strong. So it's not going to fail. Okay, uh, will there be any extension if one of them fails? Yes. Okay, if this one, well, if this one right here fails, is it gonna? No, no not really. No. This one's still the same length as this one, so it's equal. Okay, so there's no extension. Is it strong? Yes. Yeah. And was it timely? Yeah. Yeah, all right, so that's a good anchor. So go ahead and uh, let's do the 540 first because it's probably the easiest to remember. All right, now you don't have to get him super tight, but just, you know, very little slack in here. Okay. A little less slack. A little less slack? A little less, yeah, all right. A little bit. That's probably good. All right. Okay. The key to the 540 is, as he's coming up, okay, and Mark, here in a minute, I'm going to have him walk towards us slowly. As he's coming up, you want to, here's the key, feed. Okay. And you let it throw up, basically. Okay. okay. All right, come forward. Never forward. Okay. So continue to feed it. You're not pulling that way. You feed from right here, Kenny, if you want. You're not physically pulling it. Just keeping the rope moving through it. All right, now, if for some reason our lower or our raise broke and Jeff fell, fall violently. Alright, so it will lock up. The only way to get it unlocked is you got to get tension off of this. Okay, so our lower, move back a little bit. Alright, so our lower pulls him up a little bit, gets some slack on this, and it's unlocked. And now you can move it. It's unlocked. So, can you raise, can you belay him going down or coming up just like it's done right now? Yeah, you can. You can. Okay, so that's how you use the 540. The key to it is, it's almost, I'm not going to say it's impossible to load in correctly. I'm sure we could figure some way to do it. But if it's loaded correctly, it's, it passes what's called a whistle test, which means that if all of a sudden you just fell out and he fell, it'll catch. Okay? All right, so that's, that's the belay. All right, let's take this part off and we're going to do and impress it. All right, so what you need is you need a long prussic and a short prussic for this. Remember to tend one side of it. Okay, don't worry about the other side. All right, I'll grab from right here, and that's going to get your knot out of the way. This side is correct. This side just needs to be prettied up. Move this one over. Move this one over. And you're good. Back up a little bit, Jeff. All right. It's two. It's three. I pull it. Pretty it up. Or dress it. If you want to be English about it. He's tucky going. There it goes. Okay. Clip it into your carabiner. He starts to pull this rope out of my hand. I'll go after some more. 
Okay. And then if he falls, it'll pull it out of my hand and lock. Okay. Ed, you ready? Lay, you ready? I'm ready. All the way. Wait, just trip. <laughs> We use tandem presses as one of our belays. I just do catch, catch him if he falls. Could this be a belay? Yes. Okay. It probably will catch him, but a single press is not a belay. Okay. It's not here to belay him. It's here to hold him. It's not here to catch a shock. Okay. So it's all it is is a progress capture, not a belay device. <laughs> Why would you? Huh? Yeah, failure belays will catch you. Yeah, you could add one in there, but not really. You've already got a belay, so why add another? But you just you just have one rope that you had to do this, then you can add it. Sure. All right. Everybody good on this? Everybody good on building the hall system? Yeah. We're living practice.